and welcome to the show. Uh, Kay Adams here. You guys can tweet at the Up and Adams show. Uh, but it was a very rewarding day of football. It wasn't like I spent an entire day. I should have done some chores or something like I was glued to my seat. We had two overtime games. It was amazing. And uh, even watching last night was a fun game because there's so many ins and outs uh, in the NFC and AFC. So Sunday Night Football, it wasn't uh, the offensive explosion that we expected. Justin Herbert going up against this new look Niners offense. But it was still entertaining. The Niners rally 22-16. They win over the Chargers. And here is Jimmy G, the winner, after the game. We got a team, man, and uh, I think it showed last week against the Rams, guys stepping up in different roles, and uh, just showed again today, just guys don't care if they get 10 targets or one target. If we get a W, a W's a W, and that's all we're here for. Okay, but I care, Jimmy. I care. I was so excited on Friday. We left the show. I'm drinking beer. I'm drunk on the set saying, I can't wait to see what this looks like with CMC and Debo. They're going to touch the ball 50 times a piece. There's going to be creative uh, play calling, maniacal genius Kyle Shanahan. He's been cooking it all up, of course. Uh, but in all seriousness, Jimmy is right, and he's the perfect quarterback for the situation. He simply does not care. He does not care who likes him, who doesn't. The team loves him, and, and that clearly that permeates from Shanahan and him to the rest of the squad to not really care about who's getting the ball, how much. We saw McCaffrey on the sidelines a bunch. The offense is a work in progress. They're trying to figure out how to fit all those incredible pieces together, and they still were able to do enough to pick up a big win against a quality opponent. And after a few early hiccups, the Niners, number one defense, the number one defense was amazing down the stretch. They completely shut out the Chargers in the second half. And San Francisco, if you look at things, and we like to at this point, we're in the double-digit weeks now, people. They're just a half game back of Seattle for the NFC West lead with the chance to wrestle first place away next Monday night if they can beat the Cardinals in Mexico City. So there's that for the little Sunday night action. LaShawn McCoy is going to be on our show. Uh, he is a daily show as well. He did uh, speak on FS1 and they crush it on that show. So I can't wait to dig into some of those takes. Uh, my old friend, we did a lot of time together on Good Morning Football. So happy to have LaShawn on in a bit. But uh, some big takeaways from the weekend before we get to that. And this is, by the way, so everyone's clear, this is a Philadelphia Eagles schedule that I happen to have printed out, and I want LaShawn McCoy to tell me where the loss is going to be for this team versus saying zero, which is not a surprise to anyone, but we'll see. Uh, okay, we got to get to the, the Vikings-Bills game was the best game of the year, and Justin Jefferson gave us one of the best catches, one of the greatest catches in NFL history. And this, I'm just, I can't talk. Yeah, you can't talk during one of those. You can't talk during a highlight like that. Oh, my word. How does he wrestle it away from all those defenders? Unbelievable. And it is symbolic of the way the Vikings miraculously snatched this 33-30 to overtime win right out of Buffalo's hands. Now, I asked last week if Minnesota could sustain what has been a bizarro way of winning in which they come out really hot, then they completely fizzle and disappear for kind of a long stretch, and then they turn it up and turn it on in the fourth quarter. Can they keep doing that and win? Well, I got an emphatic answer to that question yesterday afternoon. The Vikings er erased a 27-10 to deficit uh, in the second half in snowy Buffalo, in Buffalo, to win one of the most thrilling regular season games I think I've ever seen. So there is something magical happening, and it's not the chains, and it's not the whatever, but it's all of it in Minnesota. Uh, and Cousins was brilliant down the stretch. He engineered his league-leading fifth, fourth quarter comeback win of the season. Jefferson, of course, as you just saw, on another planet that will live on. I could watch that. I think we'll have to show it like 19 other times on the show. And then the defense did their thing, too. They're coming up with critical stops. Patrick Peterson's walk-off interception. And oh my goodness. And this is, you know, I don't know why Josh Allen keeps doing this. What is the story? But uh, it's no longer fair, everyone. And this was your notice. It is no longer fair to question the legitimacy of this team. Eight and one. Uh, do they make their fans uncomfortable week after week? Sure. But they've clearly gotten rid of whatever's been going wrong when it comes to winning and losing these close games like they did and haunted them all last year. At some point, you just have to enjoy the ride and you got to enjoy it with, you know, the uh, the chains and all, like this guy. Oh, I don't think we have it. Oh, there we go. What a team win. Thank you so much for the incredible welcome. That was one of the great games we've ever played in. It was great to win, played against a good team, five and five, everyone made plays. That's the formula, let's keep it going. Five and five, bye week. Jones trying to score. Are they 
you singing Country Roads? I love that. That's amazing. That's over, over in Munich. And I liked hearing Tom after the game talk about how it invigorated him. They added some, I mean, there's some unkind TMZ reports this morning. Have you seen those yet? Yeah, it's not good. But, uh, but he was talking about how it sort of uh, breaks up the everyday, the, it's an interesting take, and I want to say that because you heard things like from LaFleur about going to London and the pods aren't good and we don't want to travel. And you're going anyway. So, you, so to take that and say, this doesn't suck that we're going to Germany. The mindset a winner has is that of Tom Brady's. We're going to go and we're going to make the best of it. It's good for bonding. It's good to spend time with the guys and it breaks up the everyday. And that's something that I rarely hear NFL players say and that he is embracing it. And that's why I think what I was saying all last week is correct. And this turnaround is happening, baby. 21 to 16. Seahawks are do dominant as all get out uh, and couldn't get it done. And I feel more comfortable than ever in saying that these Buccaneers are back. And I'm going to ask LaShawn McCoy about it, of course. But they may not look 100% quite like themselves, but they do have something going on right now. They're creating some separation in the NFC South and the rest of the conference is going to be kicking themselves, I really believe so, for letting Tampa hang around and figure it out. It's, we're, it's happening in front of our very eyes. Talk to Levante David about it last week. Uh, and, and, and make no mistake, they're figuring it out. Brady looked as sharp as he has all year. He threw multiple touchdown passes for just the second time all season. Bang, bang. Evans, Julio, Godwin, they all had their big moments here. And this once impenetrable run defense has resurfaced. They held rookie Phenom. This is the guy who I said should be rookie of the year. Kenneth Walker had 17 yards on 17 carries. That is impressive. And most importantly, the balance is back. And hallelujah, run the ball. Brady's figuring it out like I was, I was scratching my head about it. Week one, and for the first time since then, the Bucks ran it more than they threw. This is how you win the football game. You can see how it opened up the offense. White, Fournette. They combined for 162 yards and a score on 36 carries. So if this is the kind of Tampa I'm going to see the rest of the way, NFC South, you're out. Sorry. It belongs to them. And NFC as a whole, you are on notice. And that's with some of the impressive play we saw from that conference yesterday. So um, should we stay in the NFC? Let's do this. Okay, here's the deal. Let's just show you what happened last night. So last week, I said I'm not talking about the Packers anymore because – why would I? They don't listen to me. I say run the ball, commit to running the ball. They're throwing it all over the field. Uh, and then look at around, what was this, like 8 p.m. Eastern last night? Look at the text. Look at what happened. The Packers text me, and they say, sup. And I'm like, okay. Okay, I didn't delete their number, obviously. I still had it saved, but I was just being kind of like, new phone, who this? Like, so leave me alone. And they gave me the rolling eye emoji, and they said, we're running the ball. You up? And then I, of course, sent the smirk emojis. And then I was back at their house and ma making Hot Pockets, and we spent the night together, and it was really, really lovely. And just when you think... Just no sit in there for a while. I thought they were toast. Just when we thought it was finished, I break up with them. I draw my line, make my boundary. Losers of five straight losers, Jim Carrey style. And down 28-14 in the fourth quarter, the Cowboys, a fiery Aaron Rodgers, led the Green Bay offense. It was 17 unanswered points. They stunned the Cowboys. My goodness, another season is alive. You got a, you got a headset toss from McCarthy trying to pull Lombardi, all that stuff. We're going to get to all of that. But much like the Bucks, listen, the Packers figured it out. They figured out what... Tom Brady figured out. These old dudes forgot. You know, take some Ginkgo Galoba, Ashwagandha, whatever needs to happen. You remember the good times of running the ball. And they did that. They went to the ground 39 times, and that's compared to just 20 pass attempts from Rodgers. So they ran it well. I mean, Shade is going to love this. It's the perfect day to have LaShawn McCoy on the show talking about all this running around the league and then some of the non-running that happened with the, the Bills in the second half as they get away from uh, uh, Devin Singletary all the time. But they racked up 207 yards. The Packers did. It was They were well over five yards a pop. And it was a commitment to opening things up and committing to run to help Rodgers out. If you look at this, the 20 pass attempts I'm talking about, they were Rodgers' fewest in a game since week four of 2010. But he made it most of them. What did he do? Incred I mean, he made a receiver gain confidence and then he'll never turn around. Watson was incredible, stunning performance by him. So fun to watch. Three touchdowns from Rodgers. Amazing passer rating. That ranks as one of the top 10 games of his entire career, Aaron Rodgers, after that dumpster fire we saw last week against Lions. So yeah, I am up. 
I am listening. I'm answering your call. I'm putting the, the ringtone on in the middle of the night. You call me Packers, I am there. If you stick to this, run heavy approach, Thursday night, short week against the Titans, I think there's no chance they don't lose that game. I would be shocked if they don't lose that, if they don't pull that out. And I do think they need to just keep it going. What a turn of events, though, like from week nine to week 10. Unbelievable. Okay, um, I think that's it for now, right? Are we going to get out of here? I think we should.